Hello, my name is Paul Miners, and welcome back to another one of my Pipedrive training videos. In this video, I want to talk about the lead inbox, what it is, and whether you should be using it. Sometimes there's some confusion about uh, what exactly this feature is supposed to do, and whether you should be using the deal view or the lead inbox. So that's what I'm going to be clarifying in this video. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. And if you do want to learn more about Pipedrive, if you want to get help with account setup, automating your sales process or training your team, have a look in the link in the description below to learn more about my Pipedrive consulting services. So let's start by talking about what this lead inbox is. I'll start by going into a bit of history because when Pipedrive first came about, we didn't have the lead inbox, we only had the deal pipeline. And people usually had a column or a stage at the start, which was like new lead. And the issue that a lot of businesses faced is that if they have a lot of new leads coming in from maybe contact forms on the website or ad campaigns, that new lead column was getting pretty busy with hundreds, maybe even sometimes thousands of leads that the sales team hadn't necessarily contacted yet and hadn't, hadn't qualified. And what happens is it kind of starts to mess up the pipeline and it can skew some of your statistics if you're looking at deal progress uh, and deal duration, things like that. So to help make new leads easier to manage, Pipedrive has given us this leads inbox. So this is where you can dump leads that you've received into your sales workflow that are generally, you know, leads that you haven't contacted yet or that you're in the early discussion sort of phase with, but you haven't necessarily qualified them yet. Now, a couple of things that we can do on this page, if you are using Pipedrive's Lead Booster add-on, this is an optional add-on that you can pay for in your account, you can set up live chat on your website along with a chat bot, so you can have uh, you know chat features available that collect information about people visiting your website, and that chat bot can actually create new leads in your account. If you create a web form, like a contact form, uh, you can have people or responses from that form come into the lead inbox. And if you're using the prospector, you can put in criteria for the type of leads you're looking for, and Pipedrive can help suggest potential leads to you. And so with these various lead sources, if people come from those various channels, those leads arrive in this lead inbox. You can as well, just manually add your own leads if you're uh, meeting people and you can you can manually add a lead here. You can also import leads from a CSV. So a good example might be if you attend a trade show or some kind of event, maybe you get a spreadsheet of attendees, you could import that list into this lead inbox and you could start reaching out to those people. So regardless of where the lead comes from, the point is this is an inbox of new leads that you need to start talking to and really you want to start qualifying them. So here's an example of a lead, uh, John Smith. And you can see this is basically like a mini deal. You can see the, the fields that I have on my deal screen, like I've got a summary field, budget, source. All those custom fields that I've set up are actually fillable here from this lead view. Just like you can with a deal, I can link my lead with a contact in the system and I can see their contact information and I can link it with an organization if I choose to as well. So the lead is very much like a mini deal. It works in a very similar way. And just like with a deal, there's a timeline over here. So I can take notes as I'm talking to this lead, I can store notes and I can create activities to follow up maybe you know tomorrow and I can schedule reminders of when I'm gonna follow up with this person. To filter your leads, you can add labels up here. So if I put a label on this lead, I can say, right, this is a cold lead. And so this is useful because there are some filtering options up here. If I want to look at just hot leads or just cold, I can use those labels to filter my leads. If I have hundreds or thousands, that, that can be a really useful feature. Actually, on that point, I can filter by source as well. So again, if I'm using the lead booster, maybe I've received a bunch of leads through uh, my chatbot. I can look at just the chatbot leads, or here in this case, I can look at everything I've received through the prospector. And so really, the goal of the lead inbox, you know, we're talking to these leads, we're trying to then qualify them. Now, whatever that means for your business, you know, maybe you've had a couple of conversations, you've determined that this lead is a good fit for your business, or they have the budget for your product or service, whatever that condition is for you, when you've qualified them, you can convert the lead into a deal. So when I do that, it's gonna fill in this new deal box for me with the contact that I've linked to the lead, the organization, 
I can give my deal a title, I can put in a value, and basically the fields that I've already filled in from my lead will copy over to my uh, new deal that gets created. And so I might move this lead into the qualified lead section of my pipeline, and I can hit save. And so now the lead has disappeared from this view, and if I go to my pipeline, I can see the John Smith deal that I've now created. So really the difference between the lead inbox and your pipeline view is the lead inbox is generally new leads that you haven't contacted yet or you're in the early um, conversations with that you're still qualifying. And then the pipeline are your qualified leads, the proper sales opportunities that you've identified that now you are working with. Uh, so the lead inbox, then you might have hundreds or even thousands of leads in here, whereas the deal pipeline, it's probably gonna have a lot less um, active deals that are qualified that you're actively talking to and moving through that sales journey. A couple of other things to point out with this lead inbox, uh, just like you can with your pipeline, you can filter this view by the sales rep uh, that you want to look at. So if you want to look at leads assigned to a particular person, you have those filter options up here. If you decide that, you know, this lead, they don't qualify, they're not really a good fit for our business, or maybe they don't have a budget, you can archive the lead as well. So archiving it kind of just closes the lead down. It goes into this archive view. That's where, you know, the unqualified or sorry, disqualified leads would live. And it's just a nice way of clearing it out of the inbox once you've disqualified them. And so what's left in the lead inbox are the people you're still talking to or new leads that you haven't contacted yet. Now I'll end this video by saying that you don't have to use this lead inbox. Uh, for example, in my business, I receive a lot of inbound leads from people watching these YouTube videos or who have found me on different places online. And I don't receive hundreds of leads. I receive, you know, a couple a week. And so for me, I just have my new leads go directly into my sales pipeline because usually they're pretty warm and qualified due to the um, booking procedure that I have in place. Uh, and I, I don't really need to go through that qualification process or and I'm not dealing with hundreds of leads. So there's really no risk for me of my pipeline getting really messy with lots of leads. So it's sort of a case by case basis, depending on the type of business that you have, depending on the number of leads that you receive and whether they're really hot or cold, um, may determine whether you even choose to use this feature or not. Like I said, I've chosen not to. Not because um, this isn't a good feature, I think it's really useful, it just isn't as useful in the type of business that I have or, or with the type of leads that I receive. I absolutely could use it, but personally, I, I do prefer to just have everyone come into this main pipeline view and not have to go through that conversion step. But if you do have a business where you receive hundreds or thousands of leads, um, I would highly recommend using the lead inbox to keep uh, those leads separate from your main pipeline. So there you have it. That's a bit of an introduction to the lead inbox. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.